Hi, and welcome back. We're going to do a hands-on activity today. So if you have coins, what you're going to do, or buttons, you can use other different things for this, you're gonna do some coin collision investigations. So the first investigation that you're going to do is you are going to place a nickel and a penny on your desk, or on your floor, or on your table. And without touching the penny with your hands, you're going to make both coins move. The second investigation that you're going to do is you're going to place all of your coins in front of you. So three pennies and a nickel. And you're gonna make all four coins move. So after you complete your investigation, remember what you did. We're gonna come back and then we're going to review what you did to make this work. I'll see you soon. Pause the video, come back when you are ready. All right, welcome back. So in investigation one, how did you make the penny move without touching it? Let's see if we can show you what I have here. For me, what I did was I pushed my nickel into my penny. And that's how I made it move without touching it. Investigation number two, how did I make all three pennies move without touching them? So for this one, what I ended up doing was I put all three pennies in a line. I took my nickel and I pushed it hard, which caused this penny to hit that penny to hit that penny. So your hand made the nickel move, which made the pennies move. So what have we learned about the ability to make something move? So when something is moving, that's called motion energy. If you move your hand, it has motion energy. If you shake your head, your hair has motion energy. So how is the motion energy, energy traveling to and between the coins? Now, what did you notice when the two pennies collided? And what happens to the energy each time the coins collide? So let's see if we can see my coins again. If I hit that one, hits that one, hits that one. Now, this one, it didn't go quite as far. And so in this example, I saw that the energy traveled through, but there might be a little bit less energy in that, exa in that example. And remember, we're investigating the question, how does sound energy travel through a material? Now, we know that sound particles travel as a series of collisions, hit, 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 between particles. How is what happened with the coin similar to the particle collisions that happened when sound travels? Now, I also want you to think back to the video that we watched, where we watched the spring toy and one person pushed it and we saw the metal piece hit the metal piece hit the metal piece hit the metal piece hit the metal piece. So I want you to pause this video in just a second and tell someone in your, ha in your house, how are all the th these things the same? How, what similarity is there, the way that this all works? And when you're ready, come back. So what happens to the energy when the hand moves the spring toy? The energy travels through the springs, one spring hits another, hits another, hits another, hits another, hits another. Hits another. For every single one of these, one piece is hitting another, is hitting another, is hitting another. We saw that in the sim, we saw that in the coins, and we saw that in the spring toy. And that's an idea that we're gonna carry with us for our lesson tomorrow and our lessons moving forward. I'm excited to see you tomorrow. Have a great day.